Welcome everyone to our December 1st Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. Um, and I put a link to the Etherpad agenda um, in the chat. So if you haven't been there yet, please do and um, please sign in. And um, we'll start off with um, some announcements, which actually, I don't have any announcements, I don't think. Does anybody else have announcements? <laughs> Can I offer a, uh, a marketing oriented announcement? Yeah. Um, so I, so I, I wanted to let everyone know that we are, we are spinning up our, um, our efforts to market on, on LinkedIn. And I just want to let people know that we have a new Sakai LMS LinkedIn page where a lot of our marketing is going to take place. Not all of it. Right. I mean, so, uh, Twitter is meant for us, uh, LinkedIn is meant for knowledgeable folks in the higher ed community, LMS administrators and decision makers and us. Um, and Facebook and Instagram are meant for a Sakai curious public. Uh, but I think that it would be cool for more of us to follow Sakai LMS on, on LinkedIn and then uh, help share this message with your networks. So I'm going to put the the link in the in the chat and if you'd be willing to take a peek and follow and share when there's something else you can share that would be terrific while you were talking i remembered there is something new on the um, sakai website we've added a shop and i'm going to put the link here i put it into the etherpad as well to purchase sakai gear so right now um the items there are the swag from the conference if you wanted an extra mug or t-shirt or something uh, we may offer additional items later i know a few people have asked will sakai gears be for sale there i gotta work with dr chuck on that because he's the keeper of the sakai gear inventory the, the stuffed ones um, <clears throat> but we may be offering other types of sakai gear um, as promotional items if you're interested so <clears throat> those are um you can um go there and and purchase if if you like um so I'm just put that out there wilma do you think the limited edition ninja sakaigers will be available in the shop i don't know i'll check with dr chuck because we had to figure out how to do the because um, he would have to ship them he's got them all so we'd have to figure out how to coordinate on the the orders and shipping and all that kind of stuff so i don't want to say yes and then he says no that's too much work <laughs> so um but i i imagine that yes at some point we'll we'll be able to figure out the logistics and, and get them available um, mostly i just wanted to say limited edition ninja sakaiger in public yeah <laughs> so i'm working on it i'm working on it but um but yeah we'll uh, hopefully get something like that going at, at some point Um, okay, any other announcements? All right, well, I'm going to turn it over to Josh then for the bulk of the um, meeting today. We're going to be talking about the Sakai Roadmap. And um, I know he did a, a lightning talk at the, um, well, actually, no, a full session at the virtual conference about the roadmap, but I'm I'm assuming this is an updated version of that, and then we'll also have some time for additional discussion. So um, I'll turn it over to Josh. Take it away. Thank you. All right. Hey, gang. Um, so, <clears throat> so this is kind of the second stage of our iterative roadmap process. So as Wilma mentioned, there was a full session at the Sakai Virtual Conference. And the, the feedback from that session is has informed a version two of the roadmap that I am taking around to Sakai working groups. So today we'll be teaching and learning and a little bit later in the day will be UX. And then uh, I'll consult the core team on the technical roadmap and uh, the accessibility group and maybe maybe a few others. The, the marketing team also will get a crack at this. So what you see in front of you is the general plan for how our iterative process works. So in October, there are, uh, I gathered preliminary ideas from the steering team. There is a small group of folks, thanks to those of you who are on this call, 
who are on the steering team who provide some preliminary input in October and then some uh, final shaping input in January. Uh, there's in November and December, there's a whole lot of community inputs. There's the virtual conference session of some sort that already took place. That was version one of the roadmap. There are work group conversations. This is the first of those that look at version two of the roadmap and provide further feedback. And then there's a there's some final consideration at Sakai Camp or Sakai Days in February, uh, after uh, the steering team has a crack at it in January. So this is uh, essentially stage two of of our feedback process, and there are a few more stages yet to come. And I know that a bunch of you will be in several of these different working groups, so you'll uh, you know hopefully not be too bored. But I think the conversations are a little bit different, working group to working group, and there are different areas of the roadmap that people focus on. So, so that's kind of where we have been and where we are and where we're going. I wanted to start off with a quick poll. So one of the things that is interesting is this question about, you know, what should be our priorities for this roadmap? You know, so should we, and we, I, we, I got this conversation yesterday in the core team meeting when I started there, the discussion there. And it was, you know, someone said, where on the roadmap does bug fixing land? Uh, you know, where on the roadmap does making uh, what Sakai is currently as great as it possibly can be uh, compared to adding new stuff? Inga's back. So, so I thought I would start with a, uh, with a two question Google poll. And um, let's see, let me get the link to that. Hold on one second here. Um, Sorry, grab, grabbing link. I will shove the link in the chat. So <clears throat> those of you who are at the, the workshop at the Sakai Virtual Conference saw a slightly different version of this, of this poll. And I'd like to do it again. It's slightly adjusted. Uh, it, there were a couple of points of confusion that I've, uh, that I've remedied. And there are a couple of uh, areas where I broke one answer out into two because it really wasn't the same thing so i would love to get your sense of what should be our priorities here in uh year one of this roadmap and in uh the roadmap as a whole so i'm going to put uh, i'm going to put the, the the poll itself on um on the screen share so i would love it if you would go to the link in the chat and fill out this poll. I know that there are only five or six of us. That's great. Um, I'm going to use this in several of the different working groups. We'll kind of gather up people's feedback and be able to look at our overall community feedback about what should be our core priorities. So, so take a look. Uh, please contribute your thoughts, and then I'll, I'll share back what I see in just a second here. So we've got one response so far. And let me give you a minute or two just to jump to that URL and give your responses. So now we have two. I think what I'll do is turn on the, uh, the live uh, response version. You guys can see that as the responses come in. So we've got two people. If you haven't yet, take a minute and uh, Go to the link in the in the chat. Fill out this poll. We now have three responses. That's great. Three out of let's see how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So four. Good. One of the things that we saw uh, when I did this poll at the Sakai Virtual Conference was that there was uh, there was a slight increase in priority for. Uh, making Sakai better as it is in year one of this roadmap compared to the roadmap as a whole. So the, the roadmap as a whole was still focused on feature expansion, capability expansion. Year one was a bit more focused in a, in, on making uh, current capabilities in Sakai as, as good as they can be. So it'll be interesting to see whether that's something that, uh, that you guys feel is, is still the thing. So, and I, I broke out uh, creating new UI and creating new features. They were once upon a time, the same thing in the, in the previous version. So we've got six responses. That's a, that's a decent number. Um, Inga, I, I hear you. I mean, I think this is uh, the process I think is more interesting to you probably than, uh, than 
what's what the answers are coming out of this. So let's kind of let's take a look at what we have here with six responses in the can. And definitely, if you haven't had a chance to respond yet, please do. So um, we'll be taking a look at this a little bit later on in the in the month and after the first of the year to kind of see what the community as a whole says. This is only the six responses from this group. So let, let's see what we have here. Um, so as we look at look at year one, uh, fixing known bugs, uh, there were few folks who were either very focused or four, uh, four people were either focused or very focused on this. When we look at making existing features, five people were either very focused or focused on this. Creating new UI, uh, only three people were either focused or very focused on this. Um, so there's a little bit less, little bit less emphasis in year one on new UI and a little bit more emphasis on either bugs or existing features. Creating new features didn't get a whole lot of love in year one. Only two people said that they were either focused or very focused on this. And something else. Oh, I haven't given the, given you the document to comment in. All right. So those of you who said uh, that you were one person said that you were focused on something else. So. Let me challenge that person when I share out the, the roadmap document where you can comment. Uh, so definitely at, make sure that your comment reflects that other thing. And actually what I'll do is I will, I'll put the, I'll put the roadmap document in the chat right now. So we're going to, we're going to go there next. This is a, uh, so I'm not quite ready to jump to that yet, but for the person who is focused on something else before you forget, you can add your comment to, to the roadmap document. So looking also at, uh, where we should be focused throughout the roadmap. So a little bit less of a focus on known bugs. So four people. Let's see, one, only one person is very focused, three were focused. That changed from two and two in year one. Um, making existing features, uh, four people were focused, one person was very focused. So it's still five folks, but interestingly, uh, the, the focus on existing features diminishes a little bit as over the roadmap as a whole with a corresponding increase in creating new features over the roadmap as a whole, creating new UI rather and creating new features. So. Um, so I think this is, this is relatively consistent with what we saw in the poll at the virtual conference, which is that um, in the early going, we ought to be focused on uh, bugs and, imp and improvements to existing features, trying to remove points of pain to sand away bits of friction and look over the three year period toward new UI and new features. So um, let's. I want you to remember this because one of the things that is a challenge with the roadmap is there are a million new features that we also want. So this this helps us uh, create a bit of an overlay on the roadmap so that we don't get too new feature crazy because that's that's really, really easy to do. And there are so many new things that we want and there are more new things than we want that we want that we actually can accomplish. So let's turn our attention to the roadmap now. And I'm gonna, uh, so the, the link to that document is in the chat. Three of you are already in there. I'm gonna share the roadmap document right now. So this is version two of the roadmap. You can see at the top links to the original ideas document and version one of this roadmap. So you're welcome to go back and take a look and see what, what comments uh, were in the, the original version. So I have adjusted this version slightly. And I should note that we're focusing on the portion that I'm calling the user experience roadmap. So there is another part of this roadmap. There is a technical roadmap. And this is a, a con prioritization conversation that's being had with the core team. So definitely feel free to join those conversations. There will be um, a survey process that we'll do to help prioritize these items in the technical roadmap and then a follow-up core team conversation likely in two weeks, uh, maybe after the first of the year, depending upon the kind of responses we get to the survey. So definitely the, you know, everyone is welcome to join into these conversations, but in, in the other work groups, I'm focusing primarily on what I'm calling the user experience roadmap. So let me, um, let me give you, let's just share again how this works, right? So you should feel free to comment anywhere in this document that you want. 
use your comments to add, uh, you know, to listen things that aren't here that ought to be. Uh, use your comments to add your your agreements to things that are here or to amplify other people's agreements. So the comment stream in this document is really going to be the uh, the the information of record on on this roadmap in terms of how you feel about it and what you think is important and what you think ought to be changed and what you think, if anything, ought to be removed. <clears throat> so what, what have we got here? So uh, we we as we continue to have three threads in the user experience roadmap. So there's a thread of new features, there's a thread of improvements, and there's a thread of ongoing investment. So when we talk about the roadmap on SakaiLMS.org, uh, when we talk about it in uh, in social media, when I talk about it in, uh, in Wilma and I talk about it in presentations to prospective adopters, we tend to focus on the new features and the improvements threads. Uh, the ongoing investment thread is is open to people who want to go to our Confluence page and look at the roadmap. It's not hidden, but it's also not emphasized. So let's let's see what we've got here. And this is broken out into three years. So in 2023, there are a couple of items above the line in new features and improvements. So these are items that are either already underway or the community has already decided to allocate money to them. So I consider them to be a little bit further advanced than some of these other things. So what's already underway in the new features column? So we've got the new Sakai UI. Um, uh, Michael Green likes to call this Trinity. Uh, other folks are maybe less enamored of the Trinity name. I think probably when we talk in public about the new Sakai UI, we probably won't use the term Trinity um, just because I think that it's it's kind of a fun internal code name. But that's, you know, so new Sakai UI is, is uh, already underway. Uh, there's been a lot of planning done by Sean Green, uh, by Sean Foster and Michael Green. Um, Sean Green played outfield for the Toronto Blue Jays back in the day. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, there's a technical meeting every week. Uh, some of the development work is being done by EDF. So that's that's definitely moving ahead. Sakai Conversations is also moving ahead. That's something that Longsight is developing in partnership with Duke. So we're, uh, there'll be a version of Sakai Conversations that handles Q&A that's going to be in Sakai 22 and a version that handles a graded threaded discussion that's going to be in Sakai 23. So those two items are in the new features column and above the line because they're already moving. Below the line, we've got uh, Lessons 2.0, and the University of Dayton is giving a lot of thought to this. They've contributed a bunch of improvements to Lessons already, and they've got uh, more that they're working on. There are a couple of items here in Amber, uh, which is, you know, so one is uh, annotation in Sakai Grader. This is much requested. Um, you know, faculty, when faculty grade using the new Sakai Grader, they want to be able to annotate the documents that they see. Uh, you know, not just put a put a text based comment in a box that applies to the whole document. So this is very much requested program level analytics and support for competencies. I'm combining these at this particular moment because they're very similar. Well, they're not they're not similar, right? They're they're connected. So, uh, you know, many people have asked for the ability to, uh, you know, address uh, programmatic competencies in courses and across courses and to be able to report on the achievement of competencies. Uh, at the program level, at the department level, at the institutional level. So this is, you know, this is the ability to define these competencies for individual learning paths, for competency and mastery based education, uh, but also be able to report upon them uh, in the course and beyond the course. So those two are in amber because it's my it's my feeling that we can't have both in 2023. So that's definitely I want to flag that for conversation here. And I've I put a limited mobile app also in 2023 based upon the feedback on version one. So I'm suggesting here that this limited mobile app might be notifications oriented. So, you know, it's something that would push Sakai notifications to the mobile device, but not provide a lot of additional functionality beyond that. That's something that we can discuss that's open for conversation. But based upon the feedback on version one, that's a change that I've made here in version two. Uh, later on in 2024, in new, in, under new features, we get the achievement service and badging support. I think that there are many people who would argue that that ought to be sooner. So that's open for conversation. Uh, a Sakai messages tool so that all the messages in Sakai are in the same place. Possibly an expanded Sakai mobile app. And uh, later on, possibly smart agents, new course registration tool. Um, let's see, I now have Sakai mobile app in here twice. Uh, we'll, we'll fix that and new features TBD. So in improvements above the line, we have the meetings tool. 
with uh, Zoom and Microsoft Teams integrations planned. So this is something that EDF is already working on. Longsite commissioned a bunch of UX designs. So thanks to Wilma for, for leading that effort. And, and EDF is doing a bunch of the, the development already. Uh, we, we allocated community money to uh, improve dashboard task list widget. Uh, Charles Bristow and others have been pushing for this. So this is meant to aggregate all of the uh, deliverable style tasks across tools and across courses so that uh, currently only assignments show up in the dashboard task list widget. Uh, but the idea is if you, you know, you want all of your course deliverables to appear there so that some aren't preferenced over others and you don't have, uh, you know, a, a, a skewed sense of what's actually due in your courses and how to stay on task. So also in improvements, uh, statistics tool, UX improvements, sending announcements to roles within groups is something that, that uh, bubbled up organically. Uh, resources integration for OneDrive. This is something that may very well happen uh, by, you know, take place by EDF uh, on behalf of the Spanish institutions using EU funds. So the, the process of getting those funds allocated is well underway at this point. Um, and uh, some, some other items also under, under improvements. In ongoing investment for 2023, the things that popped to the surface from the last round of conversation was uh, improved CK editor accessibility, improved course copy and publishing. There are JIRAs for those already. Uh, workflow improvements for assignments, group locking. And there's been a lot of conversation at the Sakai Virtual Conference and elsewhere about site info reorganization and separation. Uh, Sean did a whole, a whole workshop about this and there were a lot of takeaways from that. So uh, I'm, that's currently in the list for 2023, although I bet you we can't do all of those things. So that's, that's worth some conversation. So let me, um, let me pause there. Um, you know, I don't need to recite all of this, but it kind of helps to, to get us all on the same page here. So, so I wanna ask you two key questions. Question number one is, um, which of these items are most important to you? So you can feel free to either uh, talk in the chat, to comment in the documents, to, to unmute yourself and, you know, and speak out loud. So I'm curious, before we turn to things that aren't here, which of these things are most important? So let me turn the floor over to you at this point. Those who haven't spent time in a lot of meetings with me, I'm, I'm waiting you out, so. Time, time for you to speak up now. I'd like to know what this new UI looks like. That is a good question. Um, let's um, look. Wilma, should we, uh, should we show the mock-up that uh, has come from Sean and Michael? Um, do we have a more recent one than the one I used for the testing? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I mean, beyond what you put in the slides before the, the Thanksgiving break, I don't know of yeah. one. Um, if you go here, and Terry, you may have seen this already. This is the latest one that I have where there may have been some additional work done. Um, if you click on one of the classes in the, the list, don't focus too much on the dashboard because I think that's still getting some love. But once you get into the course, um, you see that the navigation there and um, the navigation and assignments particularly. Um, the um, Removal of tabs is one thing we wanted to remove all the, the tabs and tabs and tabs that tend to be in, in all, all the different tools to, to streamline that to make things a little more um, functional uh, where you can do bulk actions. Um, movement of the favorites over to the, the left tools uh, list. So you've got courses and then tools within courses. Um, so things like that are, are part of the UI change. Um, but again, this is a, kind of a preliminary mock-up. 
So I don't know if it's changed since then in a significant way. Any other uh, thoughts, comments about the new UI that's proposed before we turn back to the, the roadmap itself? So Terry, I put your comment from the chat uh, into the document. Um, I, I commented in the ongoing investment thread because I, I think you're right. I mean, some of this has to do with testing. So, but I think that's, that, that's, that's a worthwhile thing to have in there. What are, what are some other thoughts? Um, maybe we can, we can go around. We'll do a, I haven't done this, this recently, but uh, um, let's, let's think about new features and improvements for the moment. And maybe let's, let's just sort of, sort of go around and I'll, I'll call on each person. Maybe you can give me a sense of you know what what one thing is uh, you know which which of these things seems most important to you or which which few of these things surface to the top of your list so um, Wilma do you, do you do you want to go first um, what's what's most important to you on this list I'm probably a bad person to ask because I'm gonna say everything <laughs> well I'm, I'm, I'm part, partially I'm giving everyone a chance to think. Um, yeah. But I know you've also seen this before, so. Yeah, um, I think, it, are you talking in a particular year? That will help me limit a little let's, bit. Uh, let's start with, with 2023, because okay. we can't do all the things that we have listed here. So we have to start by prioritizing there. Okay, so in 2023, if um, if it's a choice between annotation and analytics slash competencies, um, I reluctantly have to choose program analytics slash competencies because annotation, there's other ways to do it. There's workarounds, there's third party tools, but program level analytics and competencies, there's really not a good substitute other than uh, lots of SQL queries, which is a, not a very friendly way of doing it. So um, if I had to choose between those two, that's the one I would pick. I'd still want them both. So, so that's why I said I'm a bad person to ask because I want everything. <laughs> um, I do think the limited mobile app is, for whatever reason, becoming more and more requested. Like I've heard so many people um, in RFPs or just conversation asking about a mobile app. Um, so that one, for whatever reason, has has gained in in. Uh, and people you know, requesting it. Um, so I think that the, at least a limited mobile app um, would be something we would really want to shoot for. As far as improvements, um, I think the dashboard and adding other types of data visualizations to the dashboard um, would be the best bang for the buck there. I'd love to see the stats tool beefed up, but I think that maybe a lot of the, the types of things that you would look for in, in the statistics tool could actually be widgets in the dashboard, and um, they might be better placed there. So maybe you wouldn't have to do both. Um, uh, the other two items, um, I think you can already, oh, you can send announcements to groups, not roles within groups. But there's an easy workaround for that. You just make a group for that role. Um, so, you know, there's some things on the list that don't really seem super, super press pressing to me when compared to some of the other items. Um, the resources integration for uh, cloud storage, I think is important. But if it's only OneDrive, it's less important because OneDrive is kind of a subset of our users. So if it was resources integration for everything that we support right now, which is Google Drive and OneDrive and any others that we would support, um, that would rise a little more in importance. But I think it needs to be more than just OneDrive. 
Um, that's a that's a weird one, right? Because um, you know, if that's going to happen, the Spanish institutions will pay EDF to do it, and OneDrive is what they care about. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, as long as it can be done in a way that Google Drive can be added easily. Yep. Agreed. Um, you know, so, multi, multi provider capable. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I guess it, it makes sense to put it on the roadmap because it is an overall improvement. But if it's being driven by a certain group of institutions, I mean, that happens all the time anyway, whether things are on the roadmap or not. So. Yeah, it's, it's good to know that it's oh, happening, but yeah. You know, I mean, I like I, I want that work not to happen in a silo, come entirely separate from the roadmap process. But but you're right. I mean, it's it it adds some clarity and it adds some confusion all at the same time to include that stuff. I'm pretty sure that announcements to roles within groups also came out of that process, right? Possibly. Yeah, we'd have to check. All right. You might want to label them. Actually, if it's something that was specific from a particular group, um, then maybe we should. Oh, that's what the SP means. I didn't know what that means meant. <laughs> yeah, I, I I traffic in uh, you know abbreviations that are meaningful only to me. So yeah, if there's there's a better way to to show that. <laughs> yeah, you know maybe a Spanish flag ought to go in there or something. Uh, likewise, uh, the, the the UD after lessons 2.0 refers to U Dayton. So I you know I assume that there will be uh, lessons improvements and possibly even something that, that approaches a, a lessons 2.0 because Dayton is focused on this. Um, all right, so let's see, moving on from Wilma to Charles because you're next on my list. Charles, what, what, do, what do you think is most important here? Do you want to focus on the things that are above the lines or below the lines? I would say probably below the line because the stuff above the line is being worked on in some fashion already. Okay. For new features. I'd probably give the edge to analytics over the mobile app, but mobile app is a close second. They're sort of features that appeal to two different constituencies. Um, obviously, the app is more student facing, whereas the analytics is more administrative facing. Improvements. Kind of a toss up, probably the statistics tool UX improvements. Well, the, the app could be more, could also be like instructor facing. I think there's like maybe the three roles right in Sakai. There's Instructors, students, and admins. Is there another use role? Um, I think with the speed grader, you know, instructors probably would get a good use of a mobile app, but that's that would be like future features, where mm. students would also get that. But admins probably would not get much usage at all out of a mobile app, right? Right. I mean, Matt, you, you raise an interesting point, right? So grading on mobile is not something that even really is, is represented on this roadmap. Um, so maybe maybe it ought to be. You know, we've been thinking about the mobile app as something that is student focused. Um, but, you know, you, you raise a good question. I mean, so what do others think about uh, faculty focused capabilities for a mobile app? How how close to the top of the pile do those rise? It's a big use case here. I mean, there's 40% of users that use iOS or Android to access the LMS here. And um, I'm sure most of them go through the mobile app. And it's, um, you know, grading is a big part. Like in the grading, you can use the speed grader and uh, you can you can do annotations and you, know, you do that kind of stuff. So people want to be able to do that on an iPad or on a, you know, something like that. 
instructors seem to really like to do that. And uh, rather than sit at their computer, I guess, and do the grading, and they can actually like, write and draw and do stuff on the iPad that you can't do on your computer. So that's a big feature that we don't really, I don't think, really cater for in Sakai. So does uh, does does Canvas handle that with um, with responsive design for for the tablet and a mobile app for for the the smartphone, or are there is 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 the is, does the app address both of the mobile devices? I think the app is custom, and, and they don't have responsive design, so everything in the app is custom. So the, the app provides capabilities that the, the web UI doesn't. That's right. The, the, app, the app UI actually allows you to do annotations. In the web UI, you can't do it for, for some things. And so the, the, the idea there is, uh, you know, Apple Pencil style annotations, right? I want to I, I scribble on the document. Is that the That's right. Case? Yeah, like have a PDF and be able to like, you know, have, you know, put shapes and right on the document and have it have the have it go back to the user yeah which That's is kind of interesting i mean wilma when we talk about an annotation sakai grader we've been talking about uh word and google doc style commenting right actually i was thinking both i was thinking like a pencil tool that you could use to draw or write on a document as well as text tool where you could insert typed text. Sometimes people want to just circle something, you know, or underline something. Right. And there needs to be a way to do that. And with a mobile device, that's typically a lot easier. I mean, there's some PCs that have touch screens, but there's no Macs that have that yet, other than the mobile ones. It's really interesting. Um, well, that's that's a good question. So, um, what do what do others think of, about that? You know, so when we say annotation, you know, and we think about these two use cases, you know, a are there other use cases that we're missing? You know, under the heading of annotation, but you know, b which of if we could only have one of the use cases at a time, you know, which one would you choose first? You mean use cases in mobile versus desktop or well no i mean like I'm, I'm thinking about you know so under the heading of annotation i mean so there's there's google doc style commenting there's uh, apple pencil style uh you know like uh, scribbling and circling and writing mm -hmm. on stuff you know those and uh, you know to matt's point you know one of them is, is much you know the, the the scribbling stuff is much better supported on mobile devices mm -hmm. right you know, yeah, if I had to pick between the two, I would pick the the drawing slash scribbling style because I think you can use the rich text editor to add typed comments. You'd have to add them in bulk. You couldn't add them on the paper in the spots where they would go, but you could use the drawing to you know, annotate the, the actual um, paper and then maybe you know provide additional feedback in a typed format. Um, Along the, the lines of having additional types of annotation, I'd love to have not just a text tool, like a simple, you know, text only tool, but some form of um, the rich text editor or another way to bring in media. So if you wanted to record an audio clip and use that as an annotation or a video clip, um, that those could be incorporated too. And you could bring those in via CK editor, or if you had some other way to record and drop things in certain spots, that would work too. Currently, those those two items are under improvements in 2024. So that's what I've described as greater video feedback and greater audio feedback. Um, do you think that they should they should be sooner than that? I do. What do others think?
Jennifer says sooner based upon the conversation, the concepts. Um, let, let me ask you a question. I mean, so would you prioritize uh, greater audio and video feedback over, say, uh, you know, statistics tool UX improvements? Perry says probably. It's hard to say they're the same for me right now. It doesn't seem like the video audio feedback should be that hard to do. I mean, we already have like ways in the CK editor to record video and upload it. So it probably could, it seems like it should just be something like that. If there's already a way you can leave a rich text editor reply, you can leave, you should, maybe you can't do it now, but there should be a way you could leave feedback. Um, Maybe this kind of comes goes in with the future CK editor upgrades we were kind of talking about too. Maybe there's a better way to do it in CK editor five or something else than there is now. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, I mean, I think that you know, in some ways, you're right, Matt. I mean, it's it's a you know, putting one up against the other is a little bit arbitrary. But mm -hmm. I, as I look at this, there's no way we can do all these things. You know, so uh, you know, in in some ways, we have to have some priority that we establish. I mean, one of the things that's, that's interesting is that having having a multi-year roadmap is really, really handy for, you know, helping us think about what's coming and for talking with people in the larger world, you know, in what year can they expect Sakai to do a certain thing? Um, in some ways, I think from a, you know, a prioritization perspective, you know, the, the technical roadmap has moved toward a prioritized list, you know, for three years. And, you know, the, the idea is just to, you know, attack technical debt at the top of the list and move and move your way down, you know? And so when, and I, you know, in some ways it would be easier for us to create a single prioritized list, um, you know, but I think it would be harder for us to represent that to the world at large, you know, and talk to potential adopters or institutions that are doing LMS reviews. And, you know, if all we could say is, well, it's, it's on the roadmap and it has a priority level three, you know, it's it's hard to know what that really means. So, but it, it makes for harder decisions on our part. So let's see who hasn't had a chance to talk yet. So uh, uh, Jennifer, Terry, uh, Jennifer said you, you've each said a bit. Would either of you like to unmute and uh, tell us what what you think is most important in this list? Um, I see. I don't see something in the list that I would like to see, and okay. that may be yeah. unwelcome. But I think that resources tool needs to be looked at at how it could be more functional and more useful. And I don't okay. see that. You're right. It's uh... actually there's workflow improvements for resources. Yeah, but I'm not talking about workflow improvements. I'm talking about rethinking how resources can really benefit and be used, be more useful. It's um, the, it's got it's missing information. It's clunky. It's really old. It's not. It's made. There have been some improvements lately. Like you can, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, the hoarseness. You can you can bring folders onto your lesson page and stuff like that. But there's still information that you can't get that should be available. And there are organizational problems with it. You know, it's not organized. If it's not alphabetized, kind of thing almost. And um, and I think um, it's it's just kind of getting all oh, resources. Who uses resources? Well, everybody does. So Terry, in, in the context of some of the other items we've been talking about today, so statistics tool improvements and uh, you know greater feedback and annotation, um, where would you place resources in in terms of relative priority uh, compared to some of those other possibilities? Um, I I think it's at least equivalent to statistics because, like I said, everybody uses resources, and yet it withholds certain kinds of information and organizational features that would make it more useful and more user friendly. Um, right now, you have to hide it from students because, but you know, not to say you wouldn't anyway, but because it's so clunky, 
I remember faculty that would just store everything on their on their documents list and not try to organize it at all. It's it's very um, yeah. It it's not getting the modernization attention that some of the other things that are basic tools are getting. Anyone else want to comment on on that? It's a it's a good point. I agree that the resources tool is is very old and certainly use some love. Um, I don't know how to attack it, though. It's kind of a really big project. Um, NYU had done some work on some preliminary UI designs when they were thinking of redesigning it. And we have those designs. Now, that's as far as they got. Um, but those could be a starting point if there were resources to continue the work. I agree. That's like that's actually one place where pretty pre pre close in parity with Canvas, at least, is that their, re their files or resources tool is really bad, too. And most people also hide that tool. So it's, um, I know that, you know, back when th there was a, an attempt to write a new resources tool that Michigan had done, but that never was completed. And I know about some of these other UI redesign attempts. It's, but we're not going to like, we're not going to be able to write the next Dropbox or Google Drive or something in Sakai. Because those are just, you know, huge projects. But, um, even locally, we've had to write an LTI tool that like makes Canvas resources a little bit better, you know, um, by using like usage data from uh, you know external analytic events and things like that to you know to kind of bubble important files up to the top and things like that. So it's like uh, that stuff probably should somehow get into the LMS. That would be really nice. Something like being able to track where a feature is used or where a, a file rather is used in the course. Is it linked to an assignment? Is it linked to a lesson page? Is it linked to a test? Um, to know where that resource is being used um, and whether it's being used to me seems like a really like a no brainer, a really key fact that you need to be able to track where that resource is. And then you can tell, no, it's been in there since 2015 and it's never been used. Maybe you can delete it. Yeah, you don't have that information to, mm -mm. to view, to see how often something's been accessed or you know, in the UI anyway, or, or you know, where it's used. And Right. And, and or who last updated it or who, um, you know, all you get is who first put it in, and if it's been updated 18 times since, you don't know who did it. So yeah, this feature is, as part of a tool we wrote is kind of like a resources access view for Canvas yes. that allows you to kind of see um, which of your, how many of your peers have accessed certain resources and which are the most popular resources, and, and if you've accessed it or not. Because like students sometimes don't even know if they've read a document or you know viewed a file or stuff like that, and so that was a big problem that they they don't even know. What they've studied and they miss out on important information especially with the online courses so right so it's uh it's 10 52 eastern so we've got a, a you know eight minutes before the top of the hour um and i want to be mindful of everyone's time and i don't know wilma whether you had plans for the the, the, the tail end of the meeting so we can um, we can certainly yeah, and the only thing that I wanted to discuss before we close is whether or not we want to have a meeting on the 15th, because I don't know how many folks are going to be in holiday break mode by then. <laughs> so, so well, here's what I'd suggest. I, I would suggest that we, you know, take, if anyone has any last minute comments, folks who haven't spoken up yet about uh, something, you know, which of these are most important to you, absolutely feel free to comment in this document. Um, I would I would welcome that. So this isn't your only opportunity to weigh in. This is just your first opportunity or your your next opportunity. This document will remain open. You can go in there and comment later. That's more than fine. Um, so I would say any any last minute 
comments about relative importance before we take a few minutes and capture anything else that's not on this list that ought to be? Uh, good question. It, uh, yes. Yes, the, yeah, uh, the, the, the link, link on there. Your bed. Yep. All right, not hearing any advocacy, let's, let's pose the question. So let's maybe take two minutes. Um, what is missing from this list? So maybe, you know, for, for efficiency, let's use the chat. So, um, please post in chat anything that isn't on this list that ought to be. Jordy mentioned Sam ago. <laughs> yes, I, you know, that's been a subject of much conversation within Longsite um, recently. Uh, are there specific improvements to Sam ago that you have in mind? A lot, yeah. Okay, got it. Um, yes, I'll put a comment to that effect on in the document under the ongoing investment column. Uh, Jennifer, Sakai greater able to view more, more file types like PowerPoint or Excel. Okay. Got it. Um, I feel like w one of the challenges with Sakai greater is that it leverages LibreOffice, uh, the way Moodle does and those file formats may not be well supported by LibreOffice, but that that may not be correct, and that information may be out of date. Uh, so definitely, I've I've noted that in the document. Thanks for that. Permissions manager in site info. Right. So I, I would say we ought to stop there and, you know, leave at least a few minutes for, you know, to, for Wilma to, to have the conversation about the next meeting. Uh, please, please, please feel free to comment in this document after this meeting. So this document is going to be open for uh, a few weeks. So feel free to comment and, uh, and I look forward to seeing what, what, what else you guys pop in there. Thank you for the feedback. This has been a really interesting conversation. All right, well, thank you, Josh, for leading the conversation and for um, taking us through the roadmap um, each year. It's been really useful to see how it evolves and everything. So we don't always get to everything every year that we say we will, but having it all written down makes it that much more plausible that we will the following year. So, um, so that's always a good thing. And um, it's nice to be able to check things off, too, as, as they get done sometimes ahead of time. So. Um, that's a nice benefit. Um, so the the question that I wanted to ask all of you that are here today is, do you want to meet on the 15th? Um, I think we had uh, discussed briefly, maybe at the end of November, that we would go ahead and meet, but then the second meeting in November, like nobody showed up, so we canceled. <laughs> so, um, so I just want to make sure that people are planning to attend if we plan to hold a meeting on the 15th. Um, so it looks like Terry says she can be here and Jordy are others good to meet in two weeks. Okay, good. We've got a handful of folks, so that's good. We'll go ahead with our December 15th meeting. We don't have an agenda as of yet. So, um, we usually default to Jirapalooza when that happens, unless somebody would like to propose a topic, I'd be happy to add it to the agenda. If you have something else that you would rather discuss during that time. So um, I'll let you go with a couple minutes to spare and uh, hopefully everybody has a, a great week. Thank you. <laughs>